Well, welcome everyone. I'm Steve Savant. We're broadcasting live from the heart of Phoenix, Arizona on KXXT Family Values Radio. I also want to welcome our online audience on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I want to give a big shout out to Beyond Fear to Freedom, one of the best Christ-centered fellowships that provide a safe and loving community for women in recovery. Just check out their website at beyondfeartofreedom.org. And don't forget, if you want to email the Savant, please feel free to do so. Steve at 180uturn.com. That's Steve at 180-Y-O-U-T-U-R-N. And I'm happy to take your uh, questions. And uh, I love the exhortation. And everybody, just so many of our people are just so happy to hear the redemptive work of God and how he has just completely intercepted our lives and then put us on a brand new track. I, I mean, I love that. It's so uplifting. Thank you for those those cuts. Well, all this week, we're talking to Jesse Della Riva. Why do I like Jesse's story? Because today we get to find out how God got in there, mm. finally. I mean, after a gruesome three days. Uh, if you didn't hear our show Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you're just coming here, you won't get the gravity of Jesse's situation and the power of God. Uh, the more and more I see his mercies are new every morning. Oh my gosh, why did he would dish it out? We certainly don't deserve it, but oh my goodness, he just gives it to us anyways. And I just want you to go out, watch it in succession. Today we're going to be talking about your conversion, Jesse. I mean, thank you, right? <laughs> Finally, <laughs> we, we euphemistically call this day Holy Thursday uh, because we're talking about people. They find it because this guy ever going to get saved, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so you're at this place and you hear this gal who echoes, if you were tagging on yesterday's show, if you're not getting that, and she's articulating your own feelings her she went through it she's a she's what about a year ahead of you in her she's redemption a, yeah she'd been clean for a year out of out of the changing life center program and mm -hmm. she told me how she felt and her addiction it was exactly how I, f I felt she also shared the gospel with me um, which isn't something uh, you're supposed to do uh, when you're working in a secular uh, you know detox place uh -huh. like that and she told me about the Phoenix Rescue Missions Men's Program, which is actually right down the street from Lower Buckeye Jail, but I always mm -hmm. walked the opposite direction mm -hmm. of, of that program. Uh, and I ended up uh, leaving Community Bridges. Uh, that night I slept behind a dumpster at, uh, at a McDonald's down the street, and then mm -hmm. the, dump, the dump truck, when it, when it came to pick up the trash, that was my alarm clock for, for the morning, and I got up and I went over to Phoenix Rescue Missions Program and uh, I got into their long-term treatment program. Okay, now, when w did you think in your mind, I this is it, I'm not turning back, or boy, I hope this works? Yeah, it was more of a boy, I hope this works. Okay, okay. And there's nothing wrong with coming with a little bit of mustard seed faith, sure. right? Even if you say, hey, I'm not fully convinced yet, I don't really know if God's involved in this, but you have just enough to say, she shared with you, this gal shared with you, you're interested, right? I mean, it's like you're done. And you're ready to kind of play. You think you're ready to go. Let's go. Because you really never really went after rehab at this level. No, not at this level. I always fought against a long-term treatment program, a seven-month year treatment program. Mm -hmm. I always said to myself, oh, I'm going to waste my early 20s doing rehab. Looking mm -hmm. back on it now, guess what? 2021, 20, I was in prison. 19, I was on the streets. 18, 17, I was addicted to drugs. So it was all wasted already. Mm -hmm. Uh but I got in and I found out it was not, it was way past, it blew my expectations mm -hmm. out of the water. Um, it wasn't like a militaristic boot camp where they made you work in, mm -hmm. in fields for, you know, no money. It was a community of believers and people that were in recovery that mm -hmm. were supportive and supporting each other. Uh, and there was no drug use, which mm -hmm. was really... i have been to rehabs before, and everyone was getting high, it w mm -hmm. but not at this place. It, it wasn't like so that. So they had boundaries there that were accountable. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it was, it was not what I expected at all, and it gave me, you know, it gave me hope that I can, I can do this. Now, during this time, you're seeing other people seemingly having authentic Christian lives. They've had something happen to them. You hadn't happened to you yet, though. Not yet. All no. right. So... What's leading up to that? Uh, the different things that were happening. Um, uh, the How I was being supported and loved. Mm -hmm. And one night I was, they, they make you go to chapel every night there. And one night I was in chapel and there was a person giving a presentation 
And at the end of his presentation, he said he changed his sermon because he felt like one person in the audience was thinking about killing themselves. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about that that day because of I was just sh so ashamed of the things that I had done in mm -hmm. my life. I was, you know, burdened by the hopelessness of my life. How could I ever change? Mm -hmm. And he said he wanted that person that was experiencing that to come up and to, to speak with him. Mm -hmm. And so I was... I was so uh, afraid of public speaking and making moves like that. Um, but at that point, I felt the spiritual pressure on my back, like someone pushing me mm -hmm. to, to get up. And I never felt anything like it before. And so I, I waited for everyone to leave. Mm -hmm. But I did go up. I did go up to him. And I said, I want, I want, I want to be helped. That was me that you're mm -hmm. talking about. And we prayed. And I, I prayed uh, to to the Lord to let Jesus into my life and for him to be my Lord and Savior and to my master and to take control of my life. And I remember leaving that chapel and looking up at the stars and the moon and the sky. And man, I could see, I could see past that and I could see the creative value in those things. And it was almost like I was having this spiritual experience, mm -hmm. um, like a supernatural exper spiritual mm -hmm. experience in a certain sense. I think it has to be supernatural to circumvent addictions at the level that you lived. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't think it can be, you know, we're not playing churchianity here. I mean, this is that's not going to do it, right? That's not going to cut it. So you made a commitment to the Lord. You came to the Lord. And from the and then I, I really like this guy's pivot, the ability to pivot from when he was going to, his message, and the Lord kind of tenderizes his heart and says, hey, listen, there's a guy in here, you know, that you need to address. I could only say, in my first day in, Ma and this is my first day in maximum security. I never, you know, <laughs> I got to <laughs> say I was a little concerned, you know. And uh, somebody had an, uh, what I thought was an ep epileptic attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, my gal, my wife next to me said to me, speak against the spirit of suicide. Mm. I'll never forget that day because I did not realize how prevalent it was in prison and jails. Yeah. And, and it is. Yeah. People want to off themselves because there's nothing left to live for. It. And by the way, sometimes you feel so bad, you screwed up so much that God's just done with you anyway. So right. why even waste the time? But you didn't feel that way. And you, until now, what's it like? The first 24, 48, 60, there was it a, were you questioning yourself or no? I just had a God event. No, I, f I felt it. And that's what really made it so I never turned back. Uh, and not everyone experiences that. And, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it happened for me. I felt it, and I seen things differently, and mm -hmm. I started to read his word. What was that like? That was what really solidified it, um, because it was. I had read the. W I had tried reading the Bible in the past, and it didn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. But now that I had this experience, it began to make sense. Mm -hmm. It says it says in Corinthians that the natural man can understand the spiritual things of the of of the world. Uh, only, uh, only a spiritual man can understand mm -hmm. these things, and that's what it was. Uh, it was evidence of the truthfulness of it because I had, I, I had given my life to the Lord truly, and I was able to, uh, I was able to understand the different concepts of the Bible and what it was saying to me at this point, and I began to voraciously read it, and I, I, I read the whole New Testament many multiple times, and mm -hmm. I began to follow its direction on prayer mm -hmm. and. To not be ashamed to, you know, of the gospel of God. To mm -hmm. lift my hands in church, even though I was uh, self-conscious about what people thought mm -hmm. about me and mm -hmm. things like that. To talk to the gospel, uh, talk about the gospel, talk about Jesus with other believers, because the mm -hmm. Bible said to do those things. And when I followed the will of God, man, amazing things started to, to happen in my life. And I was convicted of my sin before mm -hmm. God. And uh, I I had always been a person that blamed my circumstances mm -hmm. on others and my parents and stuff like that. And when I came to the Lord, I recognized that only I was to blame for the sin I had mm -hmm. committed against God. And uh, I started to take responsibility for my mm -hmm. life. And he gave you the power to take responsibility for your life. That's what I'm hearing when you say it like this. I mean... We seem to be so powerless when we're coming into the kingdom of God. And all of a sudden, we're convicted about stuff we never were convicted about, right? right. We can't let it lie any longer. We can't let it bypass, you know, just pass us by. So 
you got to convert. You're starting to read the word, which, by the way, I cannot underscore. People say, Steve, how, you know, I've been in the Lord now. I just celebrated my 50th anniversary. That's a 5-0 in the Lord. And if I didn't get saved the time I was in my early 20s, I have no idea the timeline. Probably have been the same as some of my other relatives in my family. But I just want to say, when we're talking about Jesse's, I love it when a guy, this is all in you, you know, this is, nobody's beating you over the head to do this. Right. You're doing it yourself. The attraction of the Word of God, when you're so hungry, you're so destitute, when you're so, uh, just to have such an appetite for whatever is true, and I'll do it and you start to apply that hunger and that appetite, to me, that's where we need to go. And by the way, just a little side note. If you say, Steve, I've, I have my problems and so forth, I can tell you this, 85% of the problems I deal with on a regular basis from phone calls, fellowship, and different, all could be solved if you just read the Bible on a regular basis. We come back from a break. We're going to continue on our conversion day for Jesse, and we're going to talk a little bit about this newsletter he wrote and how he met Blake, and that'll, that'll be kind of a cool story. And I also want to recommend, again, if you're hearing his story, I can make that same prayer. I could confess my sin. I could ask the Lord to come into my heart. I would not put anything off the table. If God's speaking to you right now, go ahead and jump on it. Turn on a dime. Obedience is something the Holy Spirit loves. We'll be right back, right after the break. Wow. Wow. My ears are getting sweaty. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I just came from there. Oh. I haven't spoken there in a decade. Oh, really? Amazing. Do you know who Cruz Lerma is? Who? Cruz Lerma. Mm -mm. She, she got me there years ago. Really? Yeah, I used to, I used to go there. And uh, well, I'm open to go down there again. I miss those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you can kind of set that up. Or yeah, yeah. We can, I can see if... I mean, right now it's locked down because of COVID restrictions, but... Yeah, they're going to open it up, chapel again to speakers. Cool. And uh, I've had my shots. Yeah. Oh, have you? <laughs> okay. So that's a good thing. I've had, uh, we, we offered shots for everyone at the mission only. 38% took them. Wow. Not, you know, a lot of people don't want it for some reason because they qualified for it because of the communal living situation. Here we go. Well, welcome back to 180. <laughs> I'm Steve Savant. We're listening to the conversion story of Jesse Dalavera, I have to say, Jess, um, first of all, it's so exciting to know that a guy who is, is dark and the stuff that you were into has been transferred from the roll call of the dam to the Lamb's Book of Life. Believe it. When I use, people say, Stevie, you use such strong language sometimes. You should hear me in prison. Hmm. I mean, you have to understand that we are sitting just like Charles Finney said in the 1900s. He said it's like a sinner, you know, being dangled over the fires of hell. We have no idea the consequences, how we were just playing Russian roulette with our soul. And especially dope is the worst because it anesthetizes you to any condition, even compassion for yourself. Well, you get saved. And they ask you to write a little story about your news in the newsletter, right? In the Phoenix Rescue Mission newsletter. And yep. you do. Yep. And you mentioned this gal you talked about on Wednesday's show, this gal Blake, who not only try, tried to help you in during your rehab, but also started sharing with you, right? Sharing the Lord with you. Yep. Well, that must have stuck with you because you got into the newsletter. Yeah, I'd always, I always included in that in my story, the woman that, at CBI that ministered the gospel to me and shared her testimony with me and led me to the Phoenix Rescue Commission because it was such a profound spiritual precursor moment to when I really gave my life to the mm -hmm. Lord. And that, and then all of a sudden that newsletter got someplace else. Yeah, so <laughs> that, that newsletter ended up going to all the affiliates of Phoenix mm -hmm. Rescue Mission, which includes all the parents of all the clients if, they're, if they have that information. And the, her mo the mother of that woman read that story and uh, said, man, this sounds like, she said to her daughter, this sounds like you uh, that this guy's talking about. And she, the daughter looked at it and she said, uh, that is me. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember this guy. Mm -hmm. And so. Uh, she I just, I'm just curious because this is, I found this too. When you have people, you know, you, you know she was only about a year out from you, yeah. right? But people, even when you're coming into the Lord for the first time, and there's a person only one year in the Lord, they look like geniuses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, they're like, they're the veteran, you know, even though we know they're young in the Lord, they're still learning. Sure. But they look, when you're just being born again, 
people that are only a year in front of you, like Blake was, mm -hmm. they look like they're saints. Yeah. I mean, you know. Um, so her mom, so, so did she contact, go back and contact uh, Phoenix Rescue and say, hey, was that the guy? Did she check it out? She didn't do that. She just came down there. She oh. came down there to check for herself. Uh, I was working in uh, the vocational development department of Phoenix Rescue Mission, and she walked straight through the doors, and she said, hey, I'm, I'm here to see Jesse, and then I seen her, and I said, mm -hmm. hey. I was, sh I was completely shocked. Mm -hmm. um, and we sat down, and, uh, uh, you know, she came there to encourage me because mm -hmm. she had learned that I was um, going back to school, mm -hmm. and uh, she knew that I was leaving the mission and that hard that's a hard transition for anyone mm -hmm. going from this lockdown environment or this structured environment to complete freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, and we exchanged information, and uh, I ended up um, I ended up asking her out on a date, and we've been married for. Whoa, 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 whoa! Well, I, I can't go from a date to I got married, right? Yeah. Gotta, okay, so I just want to make sure. Okay, two things in here. I want to I want to just touch because we're going to get into a lot of this tomorrow. Okay, uh, you, you know, you wrote your newsletter. She included in her. She comes to check you out to see you're doing good, encourage her, finds out you became a Christian. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, you're heading from Phoenix Rescue to college, right? Yeah. And oh my gosh, shock and awe, some guy from GCU, right? Grand Canyon University mm -hmm. is doing an, an essay contest for a full ride. And here this, yeah, I'm just trying to compare where you, who, who you are and what you've told me now for the sure. last three days. Hey, I got to go. This guy's not doing his skill sets on writing. <laughs> He's not practicing, you know, writing articles about how to do dope. Or, this guy has no background, no English specificity, right? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you go ahead and you put, and you didn't even think you're going to win, right? Right. I mean, you just did it because the guy basically said to do it. And Jesse went ahead and he did his essay, which I'm using as part of my script here. And I have to say, not you won a full ride all four years, right? All four years. All yep. four years on a single piece of paper from a guy that was a drug addict. How can anybody say there is no God when stuff like this happens? It just to me is extraordinary. He is so extraordinary. Yeah, I always wanted to go back to school, but I never thought I'd be able to. Then this opportunity presents itself to participate in this essay contest uh, to get a full ride college scholarship that not only included the tuition, but dorms and everything like that. What did you tell your mom when you found this out? This had to blow yeah, up. Yeah, they were excited. They helped me uh, edit the essay and things like that. Um, yeah, she was, she was blown away, completely blown away, because, you know, she, she was always there for me in my addiction, but I had abandoned her. Mm -hmm. um, and to have all this happening, you know, was incredible. I, I think it's outstanding. And then all of a sudden, you know, now you're with college kids, right? Yep. And and did you feel a little out of place at first? I did, yeah. yeah. I was 23, 24 at this point, and they're all, they're all 18, 19. Right. Uh, and I, and I was living in the dorms for a little bit, but I was, I, I wasn't there to engage in the college scene. Mm -hmm. I, I had, I had a job. I was working for the Phoenix Rescue Mission at, at the time, um, and I was there to go to school, not make friends, and to work my job. What was your degree in? My degree was in counseling with an emphasis in uh, addiction and chemical dependency. When you took classes on addiction and chemical dependency. What, were you like, I am totally familiar with everything these guys are talking yeah, about. Yeah, I had was some it more background. Clinical? Was it more clinical? It, there was a clinical component to it. There's a big clinical uh -huh. component to it. But my experience with being in rehab and addiction mm -hmm. and therapy related to substance abuse, I can't say that uh, that didn't help me. I, I think it's huge. In fact, I remember uh, I was uh, when I was on uh, an insurance side of the financial services practice, my boss came to me and said, Steve, you seem to be so well-versed with the pharmaceutical pages of these applications. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh well, uh, we, let's not get into that, sir, you know? <laughs> okay, so GCU, you get a degree. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think you were gonna get into college or and get a degree and get a full ride? No, I didn't. I didn't think it was possible because I, when I, when I came to the Lord, I didn't really want to go to a secular university because mm -hmm. of, All you the know, temptations. I was still, yeah, exactly, I was still, I, I was still, uh, young and I could have been tempted and I wanted mm -hmm. to avoid that. So I wanted to go to a Christian university, but 
I didn't think I could afford it. You know, I was mm -hmm. I was broke. I, I didn't have any money. My family didn't have any money for that. Uh, but then God made a way for me to do it. I, I think it's outstanding that God did all these things for you and that he went ahead, ahead of you. And now you have a degree. Mm -hmm. You're using your degree. This is your job now, right? I mean, you have a full degree on this. Yep. Addiction services is where you're at. You know this stuff uh, cold from not only experience, now you have the educational background for it. And how long have you been working now at the Phoenix uh, Rescue Mission in this capacity? I've been working at Phoenix Rescue Mission for six years. And you're allowed to talk about the Lord there, right? Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. so it's, it's all Christian, right? Yeah, it's a oh. Christian program. Okay, in your experience, in your experience, have you heard of anybody else getting this kind of opportunity in your history, your six, seven years in the Lord's history? No, and that's, yeah. it me makes either. me feel... By the way, this yeah. is why I'm saying it. Me yeah. either. It makes me feel kind of bad in a certain sense that um, I have been blessed this way when others... Mm -hmm. Maybe haven't, you know, because all this, all this blessing mm -hmm. made it so my recovery was, it, beca it became easier because of it, because I had all, mm -hmm. all this opportunity was granted to me. But, but what mm -hmm. I can say is God enabled me early on in program and I, I did pursue God's righteousness and mm -hmm. seek first his kingdom. And then those mm -hmm. things were, were granted to me. I voraciously read the word. I prayed on my knees every night in the program. I tried to do the right thing. I wasn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't seeking out women in the program or trying to get into relationships. I was seeking out like other, like sometimes other men do in that kind of situation. I was, I was pursuing the Lord, and then, then He gave me these, these things. Okay. Well, I, I'm just telling you, I have a, I have a huge history of prison of 16 years, and I can tell you this: I haven't heard anything like that in my life. Mm -hmm. And I know that you have a deep appreciation for it. And then I'm just underscoring it, just in case you need a little thankfulness tonight yeah. when you go to bed, <laughs> right? You know, I, I, I love when God just says, you know, this was my plan for this guy. I'm going to take him. Mean, he said, he said he would be able to make up for the years. This is a Bible verse. Make up for the years that the locust ate. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is making up, he's fast tracking you. I mean, to me, this is outrageous. Yeah. Okay. The last part before we uh, go, go from this uh, segment, when you continue, you went back and now you're a mentor, you're a, a coach, you're a teacher yep. here at Phoenix. How, do people listen to you because the word of God is so strong or because your testimony is so big in addiction or maybe the combination of both? Yeah, it's both things. They get drawn in by the testimony. Because uh, they, a lot of the times when they hear about me, uh, or when they first see me, they have an impression of, um, hey, this guy's never been through anything. Right. Uh, this is just a normal person that like got hired from college or something like right. that. But then people tell them uh, mm -hmm. that I was in the program and that, you know, my testimony, and then they're like, oh my gosh, that's that's pretty uh, surprising. Mm -hmm. And then they're curious, and then that gives me the opportunity mm -hmm. to. To minister to them I love how Revelation says it you know so so beautifully it's by the blood of the Lamb and the word mm -hmm. of our testimony the power the combination power of the Lord's blood and our of its dying for us and our personal testimony of how he helped us to me that yin and yang that powerful duet is just unbelievable and when people are going through their own stuff as you've just shared when people are going through their own stuff Sometimes they need somebody else that knows how they feel, how what they went through. And it's great to walk in there and say, I've done this. I know exactly how you're feeling, what you're struggling with, and you can speak to it. Man, I love all that. Well, listen, don't forget to check out BFF this Friday night at 530 for Food and Fellowship, 615 for their main message, both for guys and gals. Child care is provided, so don't let that stop you. And you can go out to their site at beyondfeartoffreedom.org, get the address of the place, the times, and all their other things, and become a, a subscribed tribe member. And remember, so until next time, I'm Steve Savant. No one's outside the reach of God. No, not.